Here's another example of a, a curve. I want to try to parameterize this a couple different ways, illustrating how different identities might work here. So we're supposed to parameterize the left branch of hyperbola. Let's just start off by drawing the graph so we kind of understand what it is we're looking at. Remember, since 4 is underneath the x squared and 9 is underneath the y, square root of 4 is 2, so we'll move 2 left and right of the center. Square root of 9 is 3, so we'll move 3 up and down. And we notice when we set y equal to 0 that x squared over 4 equals 1. So when y is 0, s can be either plus or minus 2. If I extend the diagonals of the box, then you can see my hyperbola. It says just the left branch of the hyperbola. So that means just this part of the hyperbola over here. There are a couple ways to parameterize this. Um, and and uh, one way would be to use this identity. We know that tangent squared t plus 1 is equal to the secant squared. You can get that just by taking the usual uh, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1 and dividing both sides by cosine squared. So another way to write this would be that if you take tangent squared away from both sides, secant squared t minus tangent squared t equals 1. So by comparison here, we see if we could make x squared over 4 be secant squared, then, and we make y squared over 9 be the same thing as tangent squared, then this would give us x and y as functions of t in such a way that the equation x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 equals 1, because x squared over 4 minus y squared over 9 would be secant squared minus tangent squared. And let's see, you can solve this for x. You get two possibilities, x equals plus or minus 2 times the secant of t, and y equals plus or minus 3 times the tangent of t. What we want to do is to come up with bounds on t and a choice of plus or minus so that we can go over this left-hand branch of the hyperbola. So to understand what we should choose for x, we should look at the graph of secant and tangent. You remember that since secant is 1 over the cosine, and since the cosine goes to 0 at pi halves and minus pi halves, that in this particular range, the graph of the secant looks like this. So, okay, so whereas the graph of the tangent, so this is, um, if we set x to be the secant, this is what the secant would look like. The graph of the tangent in that same range would be this. So the tangent goes up, has a vertical asymptote because it's sine over cosine when at pi halves. Starts to get really big. There's the graph of the tangent of t. Okay, so we're trying to decide whether we should let x be either 2 times the secant or negative 2 times the secant. If we, choose, if we choose t to run in this range, and we don't necessarily have to do that, we could run t in some other range. If we choose t to run in this range, then secant t is going to be positive, but we want to be on the left branch, so we want x to be negative. So here's our thought. To get a parameterization, we could run t from minus pi halves up to pi halves. And then we could choose the x value so that it's negative 2 secant t. That would make the x value be a negative number over here on the left branch. OK, and then um, if we set y to be 3 tan t, then the y value will be increasing as a function of time. Because if y is 3 tan t, it's a function that's increasing as time goes forward. That would mean this parameterization has us going on the left branch, because of our choice of negative 2 secant t, forces x to be negative, and go going up as time goes forward. So that would parameterize it this way. You could also parameterize this part going the other direction, though. All you'd have to do is to put a negative in front here. So again, you choose x equals negative 2 secant t, with t between minus pi halves and pi halves. And then you'd set, this will ensure that the x value is always negative. Then you'd set the y value to be negative 3 tan t, so that the graph of y is basically tangent t flipped and stretched, right? So it does this. Now our y values, as time goes forward, our y values are decreasing, which means that we'll go along this left branch of the hyperbola um, from high down to low. So we'd go in the opposite direction on that parameterization we get this parameterization as opposed to the first time we got that parameterization. 
This is not the only identity that, that would work for this. Another identity that you might think of is the one that involves the hyperbolics, which is kind of nice because we are talking about a hyperbola. So remember the hyperbolic identity is that quotient squared t minus shine squared t equals 1. Notice this identity, because it has a subtraction, has to go a particular way. If you did shine squared minus quotient squared, the answer is negative 1, right? Because you'd multiply this through by a negative in order to flip the sign on the shine. So this is an idea. By comparison, we could say, look, if I said x squared over 4, if I chose x in such a way that x squared over 4 would be the quotient squared, and y squared over 9 would be the shine squared, then this would give me a parameterization. Okay. This means x has to be plus or minus 2 cosine, just solving for x. And y, we'd have to choose that to be either plus or minus 3 shine. To figure out which one to choose, we have to think about the graph of shine and cosine. And the graph of cosine looks like this. It's exponential up backwards and exponential up forwards, passing through the point 0, 1. So this is cosine. If we choose x to be plus 2 cosine, it's basically just going to be this graph stretched vertically by a factor of 2. So if we choose x to be a positive cosine, then the x value will always be positive. But we wanted to choose it in such a way that we would be on the left-hand branch of our hyperbola. So we're going to have to choose x to be negative 2 cosine t. That's the choice that will make the x values be over on the left-hand side. OK, now the y values. We could choose either way. If we choose the y to be 3 shine t, remember that as time increases, the shine increases. So this is t, then this would be uh, shine t, which would basically be y, right? y is 3 times shine t. That would just stretch this graph vertically. So then we can run t from negative infinity to infinity. So you can see way back. The x value is very negative and the y value is very negative. As time goes forward, the x value increases towards 0 before turning around and going back. And that's what negative cosine will do. The negative cosine would be cosine flipped, right? So our x values will come in and go back out and our y values will always be increasing. So we'll go along the actual hyperbola. We'll go along it this way. Um, if we make the other choice, so if we say x equals negative 2 cosh t and y equals negative 3 shine t, the negative here is going to flip that graph of shine so that our y values are decreasing. So for the same bounds on t, now we'll, have, we'll be going along our hyperbola this way with y decreasing as x comes in and goes back out according to the negative cosine. So there's, a, there's an alternate parameterization. It just goes in a different direction. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh yeah, well I could, <clears throat> if I look at this part of the curve, I could, I could see this, that the x is a function of the y, right? The y is not a function of the x because this doesn't pass the vertical line test. But it does pass this horizontal line test, which says that the x, x is a function of the y. <coughs> so there's another way to parameterize this, just by solving for x. x squared over 4 equals 1 plus y squared over 9. So x over 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 1 plus y squared over 9. But since we're over on the left-hand side, we want to choose the negative sign. So we end up with x equals negative 2 times 1 plus y squared over 9. This is a way of representing this curve. x is a function of y, and so you'll remember that whenever x is a, when one variable is a function of the other, we, can, we have sort of an easy parameterization. You could let y be equal to t, and then x would be plug t in for y, right? Just substitute in. So x would be negative 2 times the square root of 1 plus t squared over 9. Again, the bounds here, the y value is t, and the y values, if you were to go over this entire left-hand branch, the y values would go from negative infinity to infinity. So here's yet another alternative parameterization that doesn't involve an identity. 
See, different parameterizations might be good for different purposes. One nice thing about these parameterizations that use the identity instead of using the fact that it's a function is that they don't involve a square root. Square roots are kind of messy to work with sometimes, especially with derivatives, whereas derivatives of shine and cosine are always nice. So that might make this a nicer choice than this choice or the choice where we use secant and tangent. If we think about having to take derivatives, this is going to be maybe a better way to do it.